Hey guys, it's Kent here from Shops3D.ca. We've got a very special guest today. This is Jackie from our Vancouver location. He's also a co-founder and our head of additive here at Shops3D.ca. And he brought something special with him. Let's do a first look on the new Raise 3D Pro 3 Plus. So let's start from the outside. From what it looks like, it kind of seems very similar to what the Pro 2 Plus offered. You know, it's definitely the same build volume. We're looking at 300 by 300 by 605 millimeters. I definitely see way stronger rods here, uh, maybe 75% stronger and also a lighter ribbon cable. But that's not where the biggest upgrades are. What are we looking at on the inside that's changed, Jackie? Yeah, so the print head is completely redesigned now. So that's gonna be the newest feature of the Pro 3, uh, featuring a removable print head. So they're now easily removable. Uh, very easy for maintenance and also you can change the nozzle out much quicker than before so that you can switch to carbon fiber or standard material um, much easier than before. In addition to the print head there's also a new drive gear design uh, so there's much more torque pushing in materials and it's also much easier to clean out so the plate now comes completely off and for general maintenance or clogs, uh, it's a much easier time to take this plate off and just maintain the part. So again, uh, this is gonna be a much better for uptime and reliability, and that's where the focus is for this design. So Jack, I have a question. It looks like we have a brand new print head, but what happens if I already have some nozzles for my Pro 2 Plus? Uh, in the past, you know, I've used the brass, the hardened, and even the tool steel nozzles. Is that still gonna be available for this new system? Yeah, so if you already have the nozzles for the Pro 2, they are interchangeable with the Pro 3, so you are able to use those same nozzles um, on the system. The major difference is you can just pop the print head out and you can easily change the nozzles, whereas on the Pro 2, it's a little bit of uh, more difficulty trying to hold the block while you're trying to screw in the nozzles. So yeah, you can definitely use uh, everything that you have already and uh, yeah, they're interchangeable. Let's talk about some of the other new features. Let's talk about this build plane. Yeah, so the build plate is now quite different. Even though it looks quite the same as the Pro 2, uh, it's now a flex sheet. So it's a magnetic flex sheet in which it bends. Your part will just uh, snap off and uh, it'll just stick right on here. So now I've seen that with the E2 system as well. You know, it's incredibly handy for us to get prints off the build plate. You know, how does that affect our prints now considering how big this build plate is? And is there auto leveling because it's such a big build plate? Yeah, one of the benefits of using the flex sheet uh, is auto bed mesh leveling system in which if there are any kind of variances or you have like a little bit of material on the bottom that's giving it a little bump, the auto bed leveling will uh, compensate for that issue and be able to do a perfect first layer every time. Uh, so that's one of the features why we can use a flex plate. Now, this is the same size and system as the Pro 2 as well. So if you wanted to, you could actually put the glass bed in there if you wanted an alternate material or if you wanted something that works better with uh, 316 or a polycarbonate, uh, you can just swap that bed out. Or if you had a previous bed from your Pro 2, you could just pop that right in there. Now, this is a new demo for us. I mean, it just arrived here, you know, a couple weeks ago. And already I see that you've really used this uh, printer. The build plate is very, very used. So you've done a lot of ex extensive testing. Can you give me some impressions of those testing? And also, uh, what are your experiences changing from the previous Pro 2 bed versus the new flex plate? Yeah, so as you mentioned, we've been printing like crazy on this. So you can see the condition of this build sheet is a little uh, damaged. Uh, this is because we've been running prints that go from, you know, 20 hours to three days. Uh, we've been using, we, we built this giant airplane, we built a giant fish. Um, so we've been just printing nonstop. We've tried a whole bunch of different materials and that's why uh, this is in the condition that it's currently in. Uh, a lot of different materials stick a different way. So polycarbonate, for instance, will stick really hard onto it. We've tried Demifix on it. We've tried... Uh, Magigoo. So we, we really put this printer through its paces and really gotten just superb reliability out of 
uh, the system. It's been successful on the big 3D prints, 24 hour prints, and even li little tiny prints with, with very high detail. Uh, it's been successful pretty much with all of those options. And all we have to do is just replace the build tech sheet on top and it's just brand, brand new after that. Exactly, yeah. You could just replace this sheet. Um, it's the same size as the Pro 2, so you can use the same sheets uh, as the Pro 2, and uh, you're good to go after that. Or you can use the uh, glass sheet as well. Awesome. Tell me about the auto bed leveling because in the previous version there was no auto bed leveling available, but now we have this. So, you know, what are the implications for the user out there? Yeah, so the auto bed leveling just takes the guesswork out of uh, leveling. Uh, you basically hit print and it will automatically level itself. Uh, there is a little probe uh, on the print head here and for every start of a print, it will touch the bed several times and you have the option of using a comprehensive mesh bed le leveling system where it will do a lot more probes uh, or a basic one which is just a lot faster. Uh, so if you're confident in your or just general cleanliness of your build plate, you can just go with the fast option. It'll take about nine probes and then start the print right away. Uh, or you can take the comprehensive one and it'll actually give you a readout of the uh, mesh bed as well. Now one thing I've always liked about the Ray's 3D you know, system is that it's one of the most rugged pieces of 3D printing gear that we have in the shop, right? The other one was heavy, it was strong, but this looks even stronger. Can you tell me about the rigidity of the system and how that's been refined over the years? Yeah, so the frame remains relatively the same as the Pro 2. Uh, the major difference is, is these rods here. So the, the rods are 75% larger than previous uh, incarnations, and you can tell by how large the linear bearings are, uh, as well as the rod. This, this translates to uh, much more rigidity in the print, so reliability and rigidity in the frame translates to better parts in the end as well. So you'll see slightly less ringing, especially if the head you're trying to print very fast. Uh, that motion translates into the frame, and then you can get uh, visual ringing on your parts. So the more rigid and the stronger your printer is on this frame and on its axis bearings, uh, the, the better your prints are going to be. And you know, now looking straight through the printer, I see that there is one big change, and that's this giant unit back here, which we did not have in the Pro 2. Can you tell me what that is and what it's doing there? Yeah, so this is a, a major change. Um, this is, the bottom part here is the HEPA filter. So on the Pro 2, there was a HEPA filter already, uh, but this is more centralized now. Uh, and then this whole unit is an air management system, which circulates the air throughout the system as it prints. So it keeps a much more consistent chamber temperature throughout the whole print process. So when you're printing difficult materials like ABS, polycarbonate, and the high temperature materials, um, you just have a much more even spread of the air so that uh, the part will warp less and it'll tend to crack in less areas you know when there are a lot of warping forces uh, acting upon the part so when you're doing a, like a really large part um, you have a much more consistent print overall I want to talk a little bit about safety right now when I opened this door there was a huge magnetic you know, uh, force to it. And, and that's a great safety feature. I understand that this printer will pause uh, if we open the door. And what other safety features do we have? Yeah, so the, the door will check if, you, if it's open. So uh, especially, again, when you're doing high temperature prints, if you open the door, it could actually cause your parts to warp. Uh, so it could compromise your part quality and also integrity. Um, but the other thing too is the nozzles are hot, so you know if you're in a education environment where you don't want students touching the, the nozzle or having access to the gantry while it's moving, uh, then it will stop your print if you open the door. Now you can disable this if you're if you're in a situation where you just want access to the printer. Uh, there are options to disable it uh, in the firmware itself, and that's that's just uh, part of the options that Raise allows you to change. Uh, the other safety features is again the HEPA filter, uh, which will uh, filter the particulates out for harmful plastics uh, for for certain harmful plastics like ABS, uh, which is. Uh, petroleum based. So I have a couple of other questions because I'm looking at some of the features here now uh, and I don't know if they were in the previous version but I see that there is a built-in camera uh, and also there are these two little 
spot holes here. So maybe I'll ask you about the camera first. You know, is it the same as what we had before or is this something new? Yeah, so the camera is much higher resolution than before now. Uh, so it's gonna give you a better quality picture so you can monitor your prints either on raised cloud um, or just uh, you know through your computer Wi-Fi uh, just to keep track of your printer while not being in the same room. So this will just allow you just a better visual quality picture of your parts. Uh, and then the other thing you mentioned was these holes. These holes uh, were actually on the Pro 2 as well, but maybe is less known. Uh, so it's great that you pointed it out. Uh, you can open these and you can use an external spool. So you can keep this side door closed uh, and still run external spools uh, all the way from uh, this door here or these little uh, through holes here and that goes up to your printer so you can use four kilogram wheels uh, especially if you're printing parts like these this is over one kilogram so you'd be using uh, three kilogram or four kilogram uh, rolls in order to print something this large non-stop and speaking of these giant large prints that we've done both the fish and the airplane uh, you know, in terms of uh, running a print this long, obviously we had to run it overnight. You know, what would happen if we used a small spool and it kind of ran out halfway through? Yeah, so there is a filament runout sensor. It's now uh, over here uh, instead of on the head uh, like on the Pro 2. Um, so it will detect you run out of filament and it will pause your job so that you can come in, you can change your filament and you can hit go again so you don't lose your print uh, just because you've run out of filament. And you know, these are great safety features because uh, with giant prints like this, it's always so heartbreaking to lose, you know, a day's worth of printing. What happens if the power shuts off? Yeah, if the power shuts off, uh, there is an auto resume. So once you plug the printer back in, it will ask you if you want to resume your job or if you want to cancel it. Uh, so you will have the option to continue your job. Now, you do have to keep in mind that if you lose power for a very long time, you may lose bed adhesion. So it's always a good idea to check if your print is well stuck onto the bed before continuing the job, because uh, if if it's not, then the head will push the print around and you'll have a failed print anyway. So um, yeah, but the, the option is there for you. So if you do lose power, you will have the option to try and continue your print, especially if it's just a quick uh, blackout. That's good to know. And even though we you know call this a desktop system and we have it on the podium and it looks like this giant unit and it is pretty heavy, you know, they, it also does come with casters as well uh, that you can put on your desk and you can lock them so you can wheel them around as you need to. I know some people keep them on the floor, uh, but it will fit onto a desk, a low desk, uh, or kind of a podium like this as well. And let's, let's talk about, uh, you know, the top. If we remove this giant print up here, you know, I see that we have uh, an enclosure here that is available to just be lifted. Can you tell me about this, Jack? Yeah, so um, this is the same cap as the Pro 2. Uh, so you will have the option of using this cap onto your prints. So when you're doing PLA, PLA will like to have a lot of airflow, so you'll want to remove the cap when you're doing uh, materials like PLA uh, or TPU. Um, but when you are doing higher temperature materials like carbon fiber, like nylon, uh, polycarbonate, and ABS, you do want to put the cap on to keep the air in, and then the air circulation will help keep the chamber at a relatively even temperature uh, throughout. So uh, this is a solution to keep high temperature materials uh, strong and printing reliably. So would you say that overall this does a better job of printing high temperature materials from the previous iteration because of the air manager and, and all of the upgrades that you've mentioned? Yeah, it's and it's geared towards reliability, so it will reliably print you know the high temperature materials, the more difficult materials overall. So I, I would say across the board, all materials will be better on this system uh, just because of the improvements on the print head and the airflow. Awesome. So have I missed anything in terms of upgrades from the previous? version and uh, who would you say that this printer is geared towards uh, in terms of uh, you know the right application to have this printer do the work that it needs to do um, yeah I would say this would be appropriate for anyone who needs a large build volume um, and that's one of the ma major features I would say the biggest benefit of uh, Raise 3D is even though it's a very large size they don't compromise on quality so you could print a very small part 
you know, and be equivalent to a smaller printer with a smaller frame. Uh, you can still print at 40 microns and have really awesomely detailed parts, even though you have a very large build volume to work with. So you, we're not sacrificing anything for this build volume like some of the much larger printers do. Um, so that's one of the huge benefits of having a Ray system. It's sort of like a comprehensive solution uh, for basically all of your printing needs, whether it's like really small to really large. Uh, so that's going to be the biggest drive. Um, and then again, reliability. If you're going to be printing something this large and in difficult materials, you're going to need something super reliable. And that's where this machine is really geared towards. It's, it's for reliability and just print quality. The output quality is superb. And that's really all you need in a 3D printer. Reliability, print quality, and um, that's, that's pretty much it. And of course, build volume. Build volume and price. Uh, if I didn't need all that build volume, what option do I have in terms of Pro 3? Yeah, so there is a smaller brother to the Pro 3 Plus, and that's the Pro 3. Uh, that is essentially the exact same thing, but it's in a one by one by one foot build volume so it's essentially this high but it has all of the same features it has all of the same removable um, print heads and airflow so all the features are the same you just don't get the height so in a lot of cases uh, where you are building a lot of horizontal parts and you don't need the build height uh, it may be better to go with the pro 3 uh, because you know it's a lower price point and it's a more uh, space efficient system as well. So Jack, that was a great explanation of all of the individual components and all of the new things, you know, with the Pro 3. But if I were to say off the top of your head, what is the big difference between the Pro 3 and the Pro 2? The biggest difference would be the print head is totally redesigned. It's much better. It's removable hot ends. It's easy to maintain. Uh, the reliability is much higher. Uh, the air management system makes it again even more reliable and the build quality uh, with the heavier rods and the stiffer gantry system, uh, those are the major changes that you're going to see from the Pro 3 to the Pro 2. So that's a, those are some worthy upgrades, but if I to watch out for anything, you know, what should I know about the Pro 3? Uh, so Pro 3, like the Pro 2, um, it is built on the same system, so it doesn't do TPU as well as something like the E2 does. The hot end is very large, uh, so you have a much higher travel uh, distance, so it doesn't do as well on flexible materials, uh, but it does better on almost every other material. So anything like TPU or polypropylene, I reserve for maybe the E2. Uh, for everything else, I would do with this Pro 3. Yes, I think the philosophy for the Pro 3 was to uh, handle as many options of filament as possible. So I think uh, they went with the route where uh, versatility and reliability is key. That's awesome. So should we take a look at some stuff that we printed? Yeah, of course. So here are some pr pieces uh, done on the Ray's 3D Pro 3. Uh, why don't you take us through your print first? Yeah, so this is a giant airplane I printed. Um, it, it takes the maximum build volume to do the whole fuselage in two parts, so you can see a seam here. This wasn't done all in one go, but this front part and this whole back part was done in one shot uh, on the same build plate. Um, this entire thing took about seven days total to print, and uh, it's assembled in multiple pieces. Yeah, and I think the wing was the entire height of the Pro 3, right? Yep, so this wing, uh, the, both wings were printed together on the same build plate, and it is the maximum volume of two feet. Uh, so it did stand precariously uh, on an angle, um, just right side up. So if we were to print this on a smaller printer, like let's say we went down to the Pro 3, not Plus version, you know, how big would our plane be? So the plane would be half the size, and half the size means, you know, a quarter of the volume. So it would be like roughly this big only. Okay, and that's just because of the limitation of printing the wing all in one go with the Z-axis height. Exactly, or you'd have to split this into, uh, you know, four times more parts than you normally would. Um, so having that huge build volume allows you to do much larger things, like that fish. Well, this is actually a Claymore from Genshin Impact, and I believe it was about four pieces uh, that were put together, glued together, uh, and there is support inside of it as well. It feels pretty heavy and it's very, very solid. And uh, if you want to see cool projects like this, actually follow us on our Instagram and uh, we'll be able to show you more. So Jack, thanks for taking us through a tour of the Pro 3 Plus and all of the new features available. If someone wants to see this unit in person, where can they see it? So you can see this exact one along with all of our cool samples in Shop 3D Mississauga. And you can come see me 
and the smaller brother, the Pro 3 in Vancouver. Awesome. So if you want to get your very own Pro 3 Plus, pre-order today at shop3d.ca.